Yo, it's Guido coming at you with a tactics talk. Welcome back and thanks for tuning in. We've got a new submission from, or a new subscriber, a new subscriber, submitter, I don't know. It's one of those two. It's Yoko Ono from Clan Pansy and they're Churchill 1. Churchill 1, Churchill 1 a tier 5 British heavy tank. This is not a tank you see a whole lot and you certainly don't see many of them with two marks. So let's see how Yoko Ono does. Isn't she a pacifist? I, I don't know. I think so. We're going to go ahead. What are we? What are we here? We're in uh, Ensk, and we're going to hang out right here on this corner. And you're going to see a pretty pretty calm and considered gameplay style here. Yoko takes a shot, bounces one, does a nice job, and then for some reason stands in. Which I thought that first move where you kind of made it difficult for that T-14 to hit you was the way to go out. You're eating a lot of shots here. You don't really need to take it. You're going to win this. He actually bounces that last one, and then finally he dies. But I think he really gave up a lot of shots he didn't need to give up right there. If you'd have kept tucking up into that and making his shots a little more difficult, I think that would have helped you a lot. Now, that would have increased your dispersion and made some of your shots a little more difficult, but I really think, based on what I saw there, you could have saved yourself some hit points. So we're going to do that, and then we've got a lot of guys kind of in the middle in the 5-6, a few over on the east side, but not much going on otherwise, and a nice little lead has been built by your team. This is a three tier battle. You're in the middle tier at tier five. You got some fours and sixes on the bookends there. There's not a whole lot going on and eventually you do start to move up. I thought that was maybe a little late to take a look at that. But here we go. Good on you for moving up. We've got a Matilda P BP and the two of you are gonna have quite the, the shots down range. Neither one of them hits very hard but they sure do shoot a lot. So we've got a Luke's takes a shot in there. And sneak forward, put a nice shot on the Lukes. Got the STVZ39, whatever the heck that thing is over there. I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna see Yoko do a pretty nice job here. See that kind of reverse side scrape? That was a really nice job. Runs into the building, unfortunately, but adjusts and then comes out. And that is in order to not just drive around with the front end of the tank. Because it's a very long tank and a mid-turreted one. Had had Yoko just driven around that corner, then he would have had shots into his direct side by the Luke. So a little reverse side scraping. That's just using the terrain that you've got and understanding the tank and the mechanics of the game. Alright, so this was an interesting decision for me right here. If you take a look at what's going on. You've won over in the west. The east has lost. And now your cap is threatened. And... I would say right here that I would have definitely turned right around and went back to cap. If we count noses, what do we got here? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the tanks seen. That leaves one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the live tanks at least known in the recent past and then in artillery. The majority of the enemy team is down by your cap. I'd have just spun right around, went back to cap, and helped your team clean that up. But let's see how this ends up happening. Good news is a good portion of your team is already back there, and that may have been in your calculus. But if you count the noses on the map, there's not that much. But unfortunately, your options are somewhat limited because the M8A1 can actually beat you. He can actually beat you. Based on how hard he hits, how hard you hit, there's a potential that he actually guns you down because of your low hit points. So we see the 105. MX 105 making a run for it. Nice timing shot. That's unfortunate armor not penetrated. I'll just hit the gun or something. Don't quite reload in time. We watch him go by, and we're just sort of sitting here. So, again, some of your options are limited because you gave up so many hit points earlier, so that you can't really just kind of mongo rush forward and munch up everything. You've got to be a little bit careful. You'll notice that the Dicker Max, I think, senses something, a disturbance in the force back behind you there, in which you should also be doing this. I would have turned around here as well because the enemy team is really pushing in. They're starting to knock down some of your defenders back there. Remember the 3001P is probably one of the best tanks on the board and he is over there taking on your P43BIS and your T37. He's got the help with a Type 64 and a T28. You win in 9-7 so we're going to come around here. It looks like you've prioritized the Jackson. Probably a good idea take him out and then you can flex back. The good news on the flexing back question here for you is this is a relatively small map and even with a s slow tank like you have you can get back there pretty easily. You take a shot on the Jackson and watch what the he does here. Watch what Yoko does here folks. See that right there? 
What he's done is he's zoomed out and then lifted his camera so he can see where the Jackson's pointed. If he just stayed here, you wouldn't have a really good idea. The only other way would be to come around the windows and allow the Jackson to take a shot. And the Jackson has the pen to go right through that turret. Lifts up his mouse, lifts up his view, zooms out and goes, oh, Jackson's looking at me. So, fine, Jackson, people are shooting you. Why don't you just sit there and stare at me and I'll make sure you die. And then we will move on from there. So that was well done. That's just one of those small essay enhancing kinds of things. The M8A1 is avoiding all your shots. And kind of funny here, he actually tries to back up and then gets himself stuck on the building. <laughs> Not quite fast enough to get off, so to speak, and dies. Again, the hit points are behind you. I would have driven right back to the cap. Who cares about going to their cap? It looks like maybe you're a little bit reflexive, just driving generally towards the enemy's cap. But we're going to come around here and work our way through the tracks. And maybe that was the plan the whole time, just to use that little notch to go through and get down onto the tracks. The only thing I don't like about coming down this way is there's it's really hard to hide. You can tuck over to the side on the right, and one of the openings you can tuck in, but in general it's very difficult to get away from them, especially if they pop around that corner. You might even be thinking about that right now. This is a nice job, it ends up ends up only getting crit damage. And the 3001 very very dumbly comes around the corner, and maybe he thought he was gonna get a shot. I think he might even have had the alpha potentially to kill you, so nice job there taking him down. Now we're going to try to kill off this T-28. I thought might, he might come around there, but he decides better of it. And we miss, and now we're going to come around here. And again, we have to be careful of this T-28, because he can potentially gun you down as well. He's trying to hide. I don't know why. He takes one hit. Nice job. Just really baiting that shot. That's another skill you guys want to have out there. Especially when you're kind of dueling with somebody like that, that might have a chance of, of knocking you down. It's those little shots. This is unfortunately going to go... Not unfortunately. It does go right through. I thought he missed right there. But the idea that when you start sort of dueling with somebody and doing the old peek -a boom thing, a little head fake, a little head fake, make them shoot at not a great target and then either miss or get a bounce, and then you have the opportunity to push back in and take a more aimed and considered shot on them. Five kills, 1,800 damage, 290 blocked, and a Churchill one. Nicely done there, Yoko Ono. Again, my, my biggest thing is I wouldn't have traded so so poorly with the T-14. I probably would have pushed in a little bit sooner than you did, and I would have turned right around and gone back to the cap and really just mopped them up with the rest of your forces. Then you could have turned around and dealt with the Jackson and the other team's campers. The other team's campers will, in general, still be somewhere near where they were camping until very late game. But otherwise, man, nice job. Thanks for sending it in. I do appreciate it, and we will see you. And I almost forgot one thing. I, I'll be honest with you. I don't know why you're carrying binoculars. <laughs> I mean, it may be a, who knows. Maybe it's just a case of that's what you have, and you don't have the the silver to put anything else on it. I would find something better for heavy if I had the wherewithal or the means or the credits or whatever. Binoculars don't do a whole bunch for you on a tank like this, but it is to taste. So I just wanted to throw that in there later.